Hello friends! Welcome back to a brand new Tumblr tutorial. My name is Mal and I make Tumblr tutorials here on YouTube every single week. This week's video is another dedication to my favorite beverage of all time, coffee. So for this design, I was inspired by Magnolia Roots Creations. If you don't follow along with her, she makes some really gorgeous tumblers. So this is the tumbler design that I was inspired by. So I'm going to kind of follow along with that same pattern and put my own little spin on it. So I really hope that you enjoy it. If you do, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of my brand new videos. If you want to know what products I'm using in this tutorial, they will all be listed down below in the description box. I'll also have links to my Patreon group, MBMM Elite, my Facebook group, MBMM Makers Community, and also links to my Instagram, Facebook page, Pinterest, TikTok, all of that good stuff is linked down there for you. Okay, I think that's it. I really hope you like the video. Let's go! We're going to start with a 20 ounce skinny straight tumbler from Craft Haven, and I'm going to start by measuring out the sections I want to have on my cup. The Craft Haven 20 ounce skinny straight is about eight inches tall. So I'm going to take my ruler here that I've had since the fourth grade, by the way, and I'm going to mark in about two and a half inches from the top down and then from the bottom up. So we'll have our top and bottom sections both at about two and a half inches tall and then whatever's left will be in that middle section and I'm going to use my ultimate tumbler making tool from Cami Page Boutique. I have a discount code down in the description box for you. This is a great tool. It's got a ton of different uses and what I'm going to use it for right now is to help me draw these lines around my cup so that I can place my vinyl the right way. Now, I did not do a great job at this. Um, I would recommend using a pencil and not a black marker because if you're going to do a different design and you're using this tool for this purpose, you'll be able to see the black marker through your design. So I would recommend using a pencil, but I wanted to use the black marker so that you could see on camera what I'm doing. So basically it has this attachment here that you put your pen or pencil into, and then you just twirl your cup around, hold the pencil onto your cup, and then it will draw a perfectly straight circle around your cup. Or if you mess up like me, it won't be perfect, but that's okay. So now we've got our three sections mapped out. I cleaned up those lines with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And now I'm going to tape off just a little section of this top and bottom area so that we have the middle of our cup clearly mapped out. And we're gonna put some pattern vinyl in that middle section there. The pattern vinyl I'm going to use is from Gracefully Created. It's all of these cute little coffee beans and coffee cups. So I'm just gonna mark with my X-Acto knife where I'm gonna trim this. And I'm gonna use this vinyl trimmer from Craft Haven. This is a really nifty tool. It would be perfect for cutting wrapping paper. So I ended up cutting this a little bit too short and that's okay. We're just gonna make the other two areas bigger. I hope that you guys enjoy seeing all of my mistakes. Um, I keep them in here just so you can see my full process and you can see kind of how I work through them and ultimately get to the final design. I want you guys always to remember that nobody is perfect. Nobody has a flawless process every single time they make a cup. We all make mistakes. I just a lot of the time choose to keep it in here so that you guys can see the full thing and feel okay when you guys mess up too because we all do it. So anyway, back to my cup. I'm using my ultimate tumbler making tool here again and I'm using this attachment that has a straight edge on it and I'm going to take a sharpie. Again, I would use a pencil in normal life but I want you to see this on camera. So I'm going to draw a straight line up and down in that little section and use that to help me line up my vinyl as straight as I can get it. And I'm just being really careful to get it as centered in that section as I can in those areas that I taped off. Um, so I'm gonna put down one little sliver of that vinyl that I cut the backing off of, wrap it around to make sure it's straight. And then I'm going to apply this just like normal. I'm going to smooth the vinyl onto the cup in this little section and just push the backing away as I go. This is really, really quick because it's just a tiny little section here. And once I get to the end, I'm going to take my craft knife and cut off all of the excess. And now with this particular design with the decal I'm going to do at the end, the seam doesn't really matter. Um, but initially I cut this off and I just cut a straight line, cut right through that cute little coffee cup there, 
took it off, and then I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try to piece this back together, and I'm gonna cut around that coffee cup just in case you can see through the decal and see that. I don't wanna see a harsh line. I would rather see, you know, a full coffee cup and just camouflage that seam a little bit better just in case. So I put that little piece back on there, and then I just cut a little bit of a wavy line right around that so that we had at least that full coffee cup on the seam. It really helps camouflage it a whole lot better. So once I've got my pattern vinyl applied to my cup, I'm gonna tape off this middle section so that we can base paint both of our top and bottom sections. And now for the base paint color, I'm gonna use terracotta from Pop of Color Paints. You can use spray paint, you can use acrylic paint, whatever you wanna use as the base for your glitters is totally fine. This comes out lighter when it's wet and then when it dries, it really darkens up a little bit into a really, really nice kind of coffee toned color. So that was perfect. So I'm just gonna base paint both the top and bottom sections using this soft bristle brush, let it dry for about 45 minutes, and then we'll be ready to go in with our glitter mix. We are gonna make a custom glitter mix for this. So I'm calling it coffee, and we're gonna start with Midas from PDB Creative Studio, and we're gonna use 15 milliliters of that as our starting base. And then going in with cinnamon next, this is also from PDB, we're gonna use 10 milliliters of that, and then burnt umber, we're just gonna use a little bit. This is like a dark fine brown. So seven and a half milliliters of that. And then next is hickory, which is a beautiful mix on its own. We're gonna add 15 milliliters of that to our cup. And then good morning is another beautiful mix, both from PDP, by the way. Seven and a half milliliters of that one. And then alter ego, I'm gonna add, just to add a little bit of a different tone to this, just five milliliters of that tiny little amount. And then finally, I'm gonna take Spiced Latte from Chase Ray Creations and add 10 milliliters of that to my cup. So I'm gonna stir this up really, really well. And there we go, we've got a custom coffee glitter mix. So now that my pop of color paint is all dried, I'm gonna go in with my Crystalac glitter glue, brush that all over these top and bottom sections, and then I'm going to apply our coffee mixed glitter to both the top and bottom. Once I've got my glitter applied, I'm going to shake off all of the excess. Don't worry if you have any bald spots, this is gonna be a peekaboo, so don't worry too, too much about those. I'm gonna remove my tape right away. You can wait until you're done. I always like to remove it right away just so the glitter glue doesn't dry and pull anything up. I'm gonna let it dry at least two hours, and then before I seal the glitter, I'm gonna roll it up in my parchment paper to help that glitter lay flat, get off a little bit more excess. You can see all of that that came off the cup. So once I've done that, I'll go in and seal my glitter with my Crystalac glitter glue again. I'm gonna start with the glittered sections, clean off my brush, and then I'll seal that middle section as well. I'm gonna let this dry overnight, and then once it's completely dry, I'll go in with my first coat of epoxy. I'm gonna start with the epoxy in the middle of the cup. The glitter is sealed, so you don't have to do that. You can start wherever you want. I just always better safe than sorry. So I did three coats of epoxy on my cup, did all of my sanding, and now I'm ready to apply my decals for my peekaboo. So I've got all of these cute little coffee elements here. I've got a couple of little to-go coffee cups, some mugs, and a whole lot of coffee beans. I cut these out of stencil vinyl, um, or a mask 813 stencil vinyl. It's my favorite thing to use for peekaboos. And I'm just going to apply these little elements all over the top and bottom sections of my cup. You can put as many things as you want. You can use little different icons or elements if you want to. Really have fun with this. Put whatever you want down here. Um, I'm just gonna fill up as much of the space as I can so that we show as much glitter as possible. So once I've got all of these placed onto my cup, I'm going to tape off that middle section, add a few more on this border here so that they look like they're kind of peeking out from our borders. Cut off the excess, and now I'm gonna go in with my spray paints. So I'm gonna use coffee brown, of course, dingo brown, and sensible brown. And we're gonna create kind of a fade coming out from the middle. Um, I'll show you how to do that now. So starting with sensible brown, we're gonna go on the very, very bottom of the cup and then up at the very top rim. And now sensible brown and dingo brown pretty much look the same. So if you have like a tan colored, paint and a dark brown paint, you can do this. You don't have to have a whole bunch of colors. 
Um, but going in next with our dark brown, this is coffee brown, I'm gonna focus that right on that line of tape that we've got, kind of fade it upward. And then I took dingo brown in the middle and blended those two colors out. Then I just went back and forth with the dark and light until I had a fade that I was happy with. I let it dry probably between, I don't know, an hour to two hours. Once it was dry, I removed the tape in the middle, and now it's time for my favorite thing ever, our Peely Peely time. So I'm just very carefully going in with my tweezers and picking up all of these decals. With the stencil vinyl, these peel up super easy. You just wanna be really careful to not go too fast, so if you slip, you'll you know scratch your paint or anything like that. You don't wanna do that. Just really take your time and be careful as you do this. Once I had all my decals peeled up, I went in with another coat of epoxy. This is a thin coat. We're just really sealing the paint, putting something in between the paint and the decals that we're gonna lay down next. So this coat maybe needs to be between like 10 and 15 milliliters max. Once that coat dried, I was ready to go in with my vinyl striping. So I'm gonna use some textured metallic vinyl. This is from Cricut. It's a gold textured metallic. And I thought that the color would really pull out some of those rich gold undertones from the glitter and also pull out a little bit from the iced coffees in our pattern vinyl. So I cut these out at 0 0.08 inches wide, I believe. And I'm going to just wrap those around that pattern vinyl section, both at the top and at the bottom. Once I had these on, I did go in and sand my top rim. You can do that before or after you add your striping. And then went in with another coat of epoxy so our surface is smooth for our main decal. This is a double offset decal, so for the top layer, I am going to reverse weed it. This is Ultra Glitter Vinyl from Craft Haven. It's such a pretty color. I just wanted to reverse weed it to make sure it didn't get messed up and I didn't waste any of it. So there it is. I'm going to start with the bottom layer first, applying that right to the middle of the cup on my seam side. So when you turn the cup around, you don't see any seam from our pattern vinyl. This is just dark brown. I believe it's Oracal 651 vinyl. So I put that down and then I went in with my white vinyl middle layer. I wanted to do white instead of like a cream color to kind of brighten this whole cup up a little bit. You can do, if you wanted to, a double offset, a single offset, no offset at all. Obviously you can do whatever you want, but I like the look of a double offset. I'm really into that lately. And then finally, we're gonna go in with our top layer, our glitter vinyl from Craft Haven. You can use my code also for a discount if you haven't tried their vinyl yet. It's amazing. So I'm just gonna go in and put that right on top of that white. You can see the white just barely peeks through. So then once I had that on, I went in with my last two coats of epoxy. Each one was about 15 milliliters. And once those were cured, this cup is all finished. So here's the final result. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you like the tumbler. Just wait until you see this glitter vinyl sparkle in the sun. Look at that. Hello. Oh man. If you like this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button down below and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss any of my new videos. I upload brand new tumbler tutorials every single week. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I appreciate you so, so much and I'll see you in my next video. Okay. Love you. Bye.